Today, you will learn why the EVCMC is the best alternative to installed EV charging in buildings, in multi-residential buildings. It will show you, we will show you how we can save, uh, your customer can save a lot of money by avoiding costly utility upgrades and how it will save the cost of infrastructure in new projects uh, by reducing the size of the feeder that feeds the total installation of EV charging. And it will we will show you that it is very user friendly and that it doesn't come with recurring fees. So it is a very simple system that will that will make it very cost effective and will satisfy your customers. Electrical vehicles are here, and this is uh, this is the trend back in uh, 2020. Today, the electrical vehicles uh, are increasing its share of new vehicles, and you can see it. This is from uh, January 22. This all these both graphs come from Stats Canada that show the percentage of electrical vehicle registrations across Canada. Uh, so you see it's growing. The trend is once it passes the 12%, you're going to see a tipping point. And, and the trend is going to accelerate as it happened in Norway. At least that's, that's what the theory believes. Norway is a country that within five years after they, they crossed the 12% the uh, threshold, it, it went to, to, to almost 100% of all electrical vehicles that are purchased new. Today in Norway, all electrical vehicles are going, uh, are electric. The, uh, you will see more and more car manufacturers coming with different models, uh, models that at one point we thought they would never be electric, like the uh, the, the Hummer. The Hummer is an electric, uh, uh, now it's electric. It's an It was a, a, a utility vehicle designed for army purposes and became commercial as a massive diesel engine, but now it's fully electric. On the, so, uh, on the luxury side, you have all the brands, uh, Mercedes, Audi, Lamborghini, uh, going electrical and the most popular vehicle sold in North America that's the Ford F-150 that vehicle is today electric and you can you can look if you don't follow the news you can look at the uh, uh, car driver they have they have news on the new uh, the new models coming up uh, whether it's Fiat, uh, Renault, Kia uh, even even Mazda is coming with electrical vehicles the the drive for electric vehicles is also pushed by governments our government has mandated that after 2035 you won't be able to buy an internal combustion engine in canada uh that's an important mandate but it affects canadians only and and literally doesn't mean much canada is a very small global market but in california they did a, sim a similar mandate and, uh, and california california's economy is larger than the economy in canada so that that's great because we're going to see more and more electrical vehicles coming to the market, and that's perfectly fine. They won't they won't use gas. They they will pollute less, but the problem is infrastructure, and that's a perceived conception that the infrastructure is going to be a problem. In 2019, the National Research Council in Canada did a study on multi-residential buildings. Today. One third of the population in Canada lives in, in multi-residential buildings, uh, whether condos or apartments, uh, multi-unit uh, dwellings, and they 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 typically would like to charge their car like people do it at home. Eighty percent of the EV owners charge at home, and they charge overnight. In a multi-residential buildings, there, there there are different problems. When you live at home, adding thirty amps to your load, it's not a big deal, but when you're in a building adding two and a half MVAs of power is not simple. And that will require a costly utility upgrade. In the uh, in this study, the National Research Council found that for, for, for that capacity problem, they recommended an energy management system, an EV EMS. An energy management system is our EV CMC. And they also found another problem. In Canada, the retailing of electricity is regulated, which means that if we want to transact uh, energy in kilowatt hours between ourselves, we shall use a measurement Canada proof meter. Fortunately, Intelmeter came with the design of uh, of the EVCMC that tracks that, that tackles the energy management part, and at its core is a measurement Canada proof meter. Now, 
once the cards appear, once the chargers appear, there's of course a new standard. CSA decided that we're going to standardize the energy management systems, and they came with this document. Uh, and that's the draft for the standard, and they recognize the different types of energy management. And they classified them in different ways of operation. Uh, switching and sharing, monitoring and non-monitoring, and that's for power allocation and for time allocation that they just created a separate system, which is basically just a timer. Intellimeter does load switching, and that's important for, for, uh, for everybody to understand. Uh, we get the bad rap from the smart chargers because the smart chargers do load sharing, and they think it's the best thing after slice spread. But it really makes no difference. You have one source and you have two loads. What we do with that source is we, 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 we direct it to one charger first. Once that, 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 that used stop is allocation, then we switch up the other one. The smart chargers, by adding communication, they talk to each other, they reduce the output, so they can both operate at the same system and reduce the output at 50%. In the end, the result is the same. You have two car batteries, and I'll simulate with uh, using two uh, uh, thermals. The capacity in the batteries is this, it's the capacity that fits here. So what do we do? We fill one first, then we fill up the second one. What they do in load sharing, they put them together, they put them under the faucet to fill them at the same time. In the end, the result is exactly the same. The amount of uh, battery charges is what fits here. And the time it took to fill them up is exactly the same. So in effect, there's no, there's no difference. It's just the way they operate. We're going to talk more about that. In terms of the capacity, the capacity exists. And I want you to think about your own home. Uh, at home, we have a dishwasher. You have a, a washing machine. You have a clothes dryer. Uh, perhaps you have a hot water tank. Uh, you have lights, receptacles, uh, electric wrench in the kitchen, uh, an oven. Uh, and all these loads can work concurrently at home. And the feeder that is fitting your, your own home has capacity to manage that peak that you see here under the word charging. You see a peak. And that feeder has that capacity. But we're not using those loads at all times. When we go to bed, nobody's cooking. Nobody is... Uh, doing the laundry, nobody is taking showers, the lights are off, and uh, nobody's playing with the computer, nobody's watching TV. So all that capacity is available. What we do with the with the with the EVCMC is we take that capacity and we bring it to to to, to the to the vehicle. So we literally fill up these white spaces in the graph. This graph shows the time when the peak happened and it happened at noon, around noon. It, 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 it loaded up the uh, everything was on. They were doing laundry, washing dishes, who, who knows? Uh, but at night, there's gaps. So that, this blue dark area is the car charging. And we do that by adding a meter to the mains. And we do that with the EVCMC1. Uh, the EVCMC1 just looks at the consumption of the total house. When all the loads in the house are being used during the day, then nothing happens. But at night, when people go to bed and that consumption ceases we take that energy that is not consumed inside the house and we bring it to the car and that principle we do it for buildings as well it the exact same thing we're human beings and the the, the way we perform it's, it's almost universal people go to work in the morning uh they're not at home they go to the office they go to sales calls they go visit customers they're outside and then at night they they they, they, they probably have we have dinner, they, they pick up the kids from soccer practice, they put the uh the uniforms in the washing machine, they do the do, they do the laundry while they're watching TV, and then eventually you we go to bed, we turn off the lights and we don't use any of those loads. So that 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 behavior is, is similar both in the house and it's a multi-residential. So that means there's capacity available there. Now, in terms of, of performance, the smart chargers look at cars and its individual units. So they just look at cars as as units. So they split the uh, the the capacity into equal number of cars, and they're called non-monitored because they're not looking at the actual consumption of the vehicles, and they reduce the power based on the number of cars. So if there's one source and there's one car, that car takes all of it. If there's four, each one takes a fourth. But they don't look into the difference in cars. Number one, cars can be of different brands. Cars have different battery sizes. You cannot compare a Leaf has a 24 kilowatt battery, a Tesla has a 1075, 
or a 100 kilowatt battery. Some have even larger batteries. And the internal battery management systems in the vehicles allow them to charge in different ways. And, and that, 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 that creates a different distribution. So if everybody connects the same and gets the same share of power, it's not going to work ideally. It's not, it's not very efficient. Furthermore, when the batteries charge and they reach the 100% state of charge, they, they tend to overheat. And heat is the biggest enemy of batteries. What happens in the battery management system inside the vehicle is that they reduce the amount of energy they take in from the source. They reduce the actual current draw. We have a we have a video in our video in, in our YouTube channel where you can see how the current starts in, in half an hour, it goes from 26 to zero. And that that curve as it drops down, it leaves energy. It leaves those bubbles of energy, and our system can look at the actual consumption. Our systems and monitor type can look at actual consumption, and literally in a large fleet, gather all those blue bubbles and distribute it amongst the cars. Smart chargers, they, they share the load. So they say, if one car is connected, that's going to take 100%. If two cars are connected, each one takes 50% or half. Three cars are connected. Uh, they take one third, four cars are connected, they take one fourth. That may sound incredibly ideal. What happens is that under a full subscription, the maximum amount of power is the power of the EV2 charger, typically connected at 208 volts, divided by four, and that's 1.5 kilowatts. If you were to power a receptacle, like the one you have on the wall with 15 amps, at 120 volts, you'd have more power. Now. You don't have to believe me. You guys probably sell flow or sell uh, charge point, and you can look in these type of arrangements, what's the minimum guarantee for power and, and, and this below the number that appears on the slide. That is why we don't use uh, load sharing. We use load switching because we're proving to be more efficient. Load switching, we do it with a monitor type of energy management system. So an energy management system is monitored when it measures the actual consumption of energy at every circuit. And because we have a measurement Canada approved meter, the I-45, to measure the consumption of need that is going to go to each charge port, we can provide the actual current that is going through that wire every second to the EVCMC. So we know if there's current available to bring another car or we're reaching the limit to curtail and remove the car from the charging network. So we can always work within the capacity of the building. We can control, there's an unlimited number of chargers that we can control with our system. And we can configure it in such a way to protect the infrastructure of the building and to take that energy that is available in the building bring it down for car charging and then split it in equal parts so that every vehicle every vehicle in the network takes the amount of energy that is required and we can guarantee that they're going to have enough charge for the next day commute and that's the difference so we do a monitor type of energy management system that is the most flexible and most efficient way of distributing the energy for ev charging now don't believe us don't believe me in the earlier slides there was this document from csa and that fourth paragraph that you see in this slide is not what we say that's a paragraph from the csa document the uh, at the core of our system is of course the i-45 the meter the, because that's our background we have a measurement canada approved meter to quantify the amount of energy that is consumed and that m energy that meter is going to meter each individual uh circuit we is going to tell us how much current each one is drawing and we can compare that energy by monitoring as well the mains of the building we can look at the building and see what the condition is in the building to maximize the amount of contribution we're going to bring to the ev charging once that contribution is brought to the EV charging we can allocate it in equal parts to the amount of cards that are connected and the logic in the EVCMC is such that the EVCMC rotates the vehicles to make sure that everybody gets enough charge for the next day commute. We provide everything your contractor is going to need to do the installation. And, and half of it, they're going to need it whether they want to install smart chargers or dumb chargers. We provide the distribution panel board. 
already with uh, breakers, populated breakers. So we're providing the means for disconnection, the short circuit protection on an individual basis, plus the meter for revenue, a measurement kind of approved meter to collect the, the energy, the cost of the energy that has been used in charging. In the bottom, we have contactors. We use standard contactors uh, for turning on and turning off the charge ports. It's already pre-wired, it's ready for an internet connection. Literally, you take that panel and you put it into the local area network of the building. In your branches, you probably have a local area network and you share a printer. That printer is connected to the local area network. So from every terminal, any one of you can send a document to be printed into that printer because it's in the local area network. The EVCMC, once it's connected to the local area network of the building, any of the occupants, any of the unit owners or tenants, that have access to that local area network will have access to the EVCMC. And by doing that, they can use the EVCMC interface software and look at the status of the chargers. If you are the property manager, you will be able to see all the chargers. If you are an individual user, you'll be able to use your charger. You'll be able to download reports. The reports can be historical. You can download the history of the charger, you can see the times that it was turned on, the time that it was turned off, when you turn it off, the average of consumption, the average of, uh, of, of, of your charge rate, and you can get as well energy consumption reports for billing. So you can take that energy report and say, okay, David, he used 100 kilowatt hours this month, that's what he has to pay. And, and the property manager can use that information for recouping the cost of energy consumption. That report can go to a billing a billing company. In Alberta, you have a company called 105 Solutions and they can take that information and add it to the individual bill to charge each one for the, uh, for the consumption. Now, there are other features in the software. You can program your meter to be off at certain times. Uh, you like to go to Phoenix in the winter. Uh, you're going to go on vacation. You're going to take a cruise and take the family and the charge port is going to be out there, unguarded, you don't want anybody to go in and charge on your time. So what do you do? You log into the system and you shut your charge for off while you're away. Or you go to the office Monday to Friday. That's a repeated schedule. So you go on Monday to Friday to uh, to work and, and between eight and five, you don't want anybody to use it. So you can turn it off during that time. And that will give the individual owner control on their, on their charger. Now, we accommodate to different, different uh, sizes and, and different building needs so some buildings don't have the height so we can put it uh sideways we can mount the the, the, the contactor boxes on the side uh we can mount it separately it, it, it's fine working with intelemeter provides you multiple advantages number one we can provide the system with high interrupting capacity breakers when the system is next to a big transformer uh we can provide it with 60 amp contactors you got a high-end building and everybody wants a tesla charger there's a charger that's draw 48 amps. So we're gonna do it with 60 amps. That's doable. Intel Media can take care of it. We can put 60 chargers. Uh, you may not want to use chargers, and the local inspector requires the receptacle to be ground for protected. We can we can do it with ground for protected uh breakers. We can add pilot lights, uh, we can do it with a power command. Sometimes it doesn't fit in the building. We can do it with an outdoor enclosure, an EMA 3 or an EMA 4. Uh, there's multiple there's multiple options on on how you want to mount it. Our standard is 40 amps. Most uh, EV chargers draw 32 amps. They can be fed with a 40 amp breaker. That's our standard. We use 40 amp two poles, and we use 40 amp contactors. It's very easy to install. The contractor has just to mount it on the wall, feed the uh, the panel mains through the current transformers that are already positioned for that purpose and then connect the meter to the local air network. And then later on, as they see fit, connect the chargers from the secondary side of the contactors. Uh, the system doesn't have to be installed completely as it comes. You can buy the top and uh, just buy the top. And why? Because the building doesn't have the demand The demand today. They just they, 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 they got 200 apartments, but there's only two people with cars. Okay, just buy the panel with a meter, empty boxes that you can add the contactors at a later date. Or you can buy the bottom, and that already happened in a building where they had 
connected the chargers and overloaded the transformer. They realized later that they needed demand control. So that's fine. You can add the meter, the the uh, the contactors, and you can add the demand control at a later date. Or you know you can buy both. Most of the times we buy both because our system is approved for the CV program, the Federal Zero Emission Vehicle Infrastructure Program. It complies. It comes with a measurement counter approved meter. At the core of our system is the I-45, which we use for its own metering. That I-45 talks to a computer, literally a computer like the one you're using today, same capability, except that it comes in a, in a little block. Uh, and that computer collects information from the meter uh, and it has the memory, it stores the consumption information, holds the control software, and works as standalone. That means as long as that panel is energized, that computer, it, the system is going to work. Uh, here's an option for another $250. We can pre-mount the, the EVCMC on a plywood sheet, fire rated, so that it makes the installation even far easier for the contractor. We have standard sizes. And of course, uh, you'll see a drawing. Once we make the standard size, somebody wants different different number, we can always accommodate. Uh, our EVCMC uses off-the-shelf components. Uh, we use uh, Siemens breakers, Siemens contactors. Uh, these are industrial products that are rated for 10 million operations. We don't say it. You're not going to believe me. I'll give you the data sheet for from Siemens. They've been used in industrial control for decades, so they're easy easy to understand is to repair everything that we sell is available through through for for distribution we typically work with uh wholesale distributors like eco like yourselves so you have access to every part uh the uh it's something that any electrician can repair you're going to find that intel meter is very different than many other manufacturers all the wiring diagrams are already on our website you can go to our website and literally see how everything is wired from the power to the controls to the modbus communication to the modbus addressing and you can see all the components in our in our in our website so we make it very easy for the electrician to fix it it doesn't require wi-fi there's no need for cellular access we don't need repeaters if you've ever been into an underground parking garage try to use your phone to make a phone call and that's the problem with the smart chargers that use wireless. And not everything can be wireless because underground, the signals don't travel very well. And we, you don't need that with our panel. Once the panel is con connected into the local network, we use that network to access the panel. But that, that panel can be accessed locally as well. You can go and scroll down the meter uh, display unit to see how much energy is consumed. You can go add uh, a keyboard, a mouse, and a, and a screen. To the, to, the, to the data collection unit to see and to program and to do whatever you want to do with your charger. We put it on the local area network to make it easy for accessibility, but the system stands alone can work without, without that, that connectivity. And we don't ask anybody for additional fees for, for accessing that information. There's no recurring fees. Of course, we can provide the software for billing if they want to. Uh, it built yeah, we built into the system multiple fail-safe mechanisms number one the system measures each individual uh charge port consumption adds it up and compares it to what's available if somebody were to tamper with the with the panel take energy bypass the meter or do something they, they literally take energy from the panel without being metered the system will know because we're that's why we meter the mates our system compares, the FCMC compares all the time what's being consumed individually, the, the addition of all that versus what's consumption in the total. And if there were to be a discrepancy, the system would alarm. The control will revert to that of the mains. And then uh, we would avoid having a problem uh, tripping a breaker, overloading a feeder, overloading a transformer. It has a fail-safe start. Uh, if the system were fully uh, subscribed, that's taking the maximum amount of energy available because it was at a low peak time. There's a storm, the power goes off, and it were to restart again. The system starts by turning everything off and then connecting one charger at a time to make a nice, smooth curve 
comparing at each time what's available to make sure that we maintain that limit. We can add other mechanisms if used for which of the engineer wishes. The important part is complies with the codes and, and both in North America and the US and in Canada. The codes allow the engineer, allow the contractor to size the feeder for the EV deployment based on the limitation of the energy management system. In this case, based on the limitation of the EVCMC. So for instance, if you were going to do install 300 chargers, you would need like 1600 amp, a uh, 1600 amp breaker. Uh, you don't, you don't have it, but you can install those by sizing the feeder with a 800 amp or a 400 amp breaker. And we do that because that EVCMC is going to make sure that that amount of current that is being distributed amongst all the chargers is never exceeded. And that's allowed by the code. And most importantly, you will have a measurement counter approved meter to collect legally the cost of the energy that is consumed. Our system is brand agnostic and David can attest to that. It works with flow. It works with uh, Siemens, ABV, Clipper Creek, uh, Grizzly, Blink, uh, and, and, and many others. And we've tested other, other brands that you probably don't know, uh, uh, from Korea, and, and we tested it with portable chargers. So there's a possibility of reducing the overall cost of the deployment by just making the building even ready and giving the owner the opportunity to buy whatever charger they want as long as it's a dumb charger that doesn't require additional action by putting this, this receptacle on the building. All these portable chargers that come with the cars have an EMA 1450 plug, and that, that, that allows them to use just the receptacle. And by putting the receptacle in a lockable box, the building, most in most cases across Canada, satisfies the requirements of the municipalities and of the CVIP by providing uh, an EV ready parking spot. The only requirement, and that appears only on the, on the National Electrical Code in the US, is to label that, 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 that receptacle to say to be used for EV charging at a, a rated less than 250 volts and less than 32 amps. And that will satisfy them. So we talked about the house and measuring the consumption, uh, what's going on in the house so that we can, when, when everybody's in bed, we can put it to the car. So what we're gonna bring, we're gonna bring the cars into charging. We can meter the mains of the building. We can do it independently as well. As the cars are beginning to come to, to charge, the, uh, the EVCMC is tracking not just the amount of energy that they're consuming, the, the current that is going through the through the wires, but it's also tracking the time. It has a timestamp when they when they connect, when they disconnect. As the cars come come on board, the EVCMC will make sure that the limit that we set for the charging is never exceeded. And then if they, there's a constraint, we're going to remove the cars from that from that network to make it to charge. Now, the way we do it, we can look at at a building. By adding this meter to the building into the mains, we can look at the total consumption of the building in such a way that if there's other loads for the apartment units, for the pumps, for the elevator, for the chillers, we, we let the building take that energy and we curtail the loads on the EVCMC that you see on the bottom left. It's ideal for retrofits and retrofits uh the what 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 the con contractor needs to do is just look at the main switchboard see what capacity is available and we can work from that capacity to try to maximize the number of spots that they can do it by just looking to what's available and that way avoiding costly cost cost costly upgrades the evcmc has two two levels literally can work on two levels, the level for the building or the level for the main the main feeder and the level of individual chargers, uh, the individual EVCMC units. And it doesn't, doesn't matter how many you have, you can have one, two, or three. They can work independently like we see it here, or they can work as uh, communicating as a single unit. There's no limit. Here's an example of a project that we, that we sold in uh, British Columbia recently in Vancouver. Uh, it's almost 300, 300 chargers. They needed 2.2 MVAs of energy. Uh, so you can go to the utility and say, we need 2.2 MVAs. And they're going to say, yeah, you know, by the time we do the trenching, we need another transformer substation. You need to put another transformer. You need to, to 
to rechange your, your switchboard. We managed to do it with 600 KVA. And we broke it into parts because, because of the distribution. It just made sense because. But the 272 chargers that are there, they all talk to one and to one another. We can we can make sure that they work as a single, as a single system. Yes, there, there's a limit. So when you look at one of these, the, uh, there's a limit of uh, 400 amps from each transformer, although each of the panels is limited to 200. The maximum output available is 400 amps per phase. And that's what our EVCMC is going to do. It's going to look at that limit. That red line is going to be the 400 amps per phase. The blue line will represent the cumulative from all the other, all these panels that can reach all the way beyond the D of demand. It can go very far. But it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter because our system is going to keep track of that red limit. Look at point A when we reach that limit and see what's going to happen. And look at point B when we have capacity to see what's going to happen both at point C and point B. So we can set the top limit. The top limit, remember, happens on A, that's the red line, and we're going to bring the car to charge. So we're bringing the cars. Remember, we have a, we have probably, yeah, we installed 100 chargers. We only have 25 going at the same time. So the cars come in, they charge, and when we reach that top limit, the EVCMC curtails the car that has accumulated the most charge. In this case, when you look at the red car, the red car has accumulated the, the, the maximum number of blocks of time of charging. So we take the red car and we put it to wait in line. We take it out, that car is gonna wait in line. And it's gonna wait there until there's capacity. If there's an additional demand constraint, again, the EVCMC disconnects the charger for the car that has accumulated the most charge. And in this case, is the blue the blue car, and we do the same thing. We take the blue car, we send them online to wait. Now that, that that car is waiting there. Both of them are waiting until there's capacity. When there's capacity, we we'll reach to point B. Then what we do is we bring the red car that has been there waiting the longest. We bring it back and we bring it into the charging network. And if there's more capacity, then yeah, we bring all the cars and then the the blue car. When then we bring the blue car to charge at the network. Now, what's interesting, remember, is that we talked about the rotational mechanisms. We have 100 vehicles, but we're only charging 25. In this case, say we have 16, right? We have 16 in this in this slide. Imagine we have 16, but we're only charging four. What happened to the other 12? What's going to happen to the other 75 that charge? Well, in the EVCMC, the rotational mechanism is going to make sure that once the cars get a, a certain amount of time charging at 100 percent they have to leave the space and bring another one another one in so when you see and look at the pink car the pink car has accumulated six blocks of time it's going to change into into a beige now it's going to be beige and even if the if the charge was interrupted we don't start counting again the evcmc keeps tracks of the amount of blocks of time that you accumulated so the red car has also accumulated six blocks of time now is black and you see that neither the pink nor the black are in the queue because they already accumulated there a lot of time so they're going to wait until the next window we typically use a 12-hour window and we do it because here in ontario we have time of use and the cheapest rate is between 7 p.m and 7 a.m so that's when we want to maximize it so we'll break that time but that window time in the in the settings of the evcmc can be adjusted we can adjust it to eight hours to to make it available for an office building where they have a lot of spots for their for their employees and they want to uh, they want to charge we can make that eight hours we can make it 12 hours we can make it 24 hours it there's no there's there's no there's no limit on that window of time that we're going to rotate the vehicles now you see that the uh the pink and the and the red change now we're going to change the rest because now the blue is going to be green and the orange is going to be black and that means that there's a the rotation they 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 rotate and they don't appear in the queue because they already accumulated their portion of time. We literally look at the ratio of deployment versus capacity to make sure that that capacity is equally distributed amongst that deployment, ensuring that everybody has enough mileage for the next day. Our EVCMC keeps track of that consumption at all times. We're pulling the current every second, and we know what the consumption is, and we maintain it always under that limit. And that limit 
can always be dynamically adjusted. Can be adjusted by the main meter in the building, can be adjusted by the main meter in the in the feeder, or it can be also adjusted via human intervention. If the building participates in demand response, or if it's going to participate in a, a energy savings program, they don't want to charge during the peak rate. Uh, they don't want to charge at certain times of the day. They can. The user has the ability to manage to manage that. I'm gonna make a stop here to see if you got if you have any questions on our on our system. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is the uh, we have a video on uh, on the sequence, and you're going to see in this video. Now we have better load banks, but this is the first system that we did, and this is a proof of concept on the EVCMC. current in the field. The software is So in, in this case, we're using uh, two lights per charger. So this is an EVC MC12. And two lights per charger, as you call it. So now you're gonna see as we turn the last charger, the first one that we turn on, which is in one and two, is gonna go off. Because that means that that was the, the car that accumulated the most charge. So you see, in the same sequence that we turn them on, they're turning off. And then the first one that 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 went off is the one, the first one that comes that comes on. And then they rotate. But if you were to count the lights, there's never more than six lights uh going turn on at any one time. And that's the, that's basically the way we rotate the uh, the vehicles. And in this one, we're going to show you how the uh, in this one we'll show you how they start. So on their startup, you're going to see one contactor going on at a time, just one at a time, and then you're going to see the rotational mechanism uh to see how how it how it's uh changes and make sure that all the car get a portion portion of time so you see as we turn it on you're going to see the contactors charging one at a time we're playing it fast to make it make it shorter but one one at a time to avoid an overload of the system uh -huh. And then you're going to see how it it, it it rotates. So one turns off, and then the other one turns on. And then one turns off, and then you see number eight turn on. And then, and that's that's basically the sequence of of of, of the rotational sequence in the in the EVCMC. These videos, all these videos and more, are available on our YouTube channel. So you're free to to see them, and you're going to have a, a link. To the videos in in once you get the slides from uh, Caitlin. Speed it up a little bit. How easy light box? No more than six chargers. Are charged. It is disconnected from the system and the next car is charged. 
the cycle continues. The charges have a maximum charge five. The ABC also has increased capacity for outdated attract individual track chargers to assist. So I, I hope you found that the EVCMC is literally the best cost alternative when installing level two EV chargers in multi-residential buildings. Uh, by doing it, it saves a lot of money to condo corporations and to apartment uh, owners by not having to go to the utility to get a massive service upgrade, change the transformer, change the switchboard, and instead use the capacity that is available in the building. It saves uh, cost of infrastructure. If you're working in new projects, it will save the cost of the feeder and the whole infrastructure because you can, instead of having a, 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 a 2,500 kVA transformer, you can do it with a 500 kVA transformer. So it's, it's user-friendly. Anybody can repair it. It doesn't it doesn't need recurring fees so on the long run it's significantly less expensive than any other options that you may find in the market today and most importantly it comes with a measurement kind of approved meter so it meets all the legalities that you're going to need to install the system uh this is the end of our presentation uh i'm here to see if you have any any additional questions Okay, if there are no questions, then we can uh, go on. I'll tell you a little bit. We have a, we have different software. The iMeter data is the basic software that allows people to collect information from our metering systems. It's also integrated into the EVCMC. It's, it, it goes with the, with the system. There's no additional recurring fees to pay for it. But we got other options. So we have an iMeter energy analysis that allows the customers to graphically see whatever parameters you can get from the meters and it works with all our meters so whether it's gas water thermal energy or electricity they can look at their demand they can look at the flow they can look at the current at the voltage at the power factor at the harmonic distortion at the demand and, and they can look at all these graphs so they can see individual meters multiple meters create virtual meters and we have the i meter billing the i meter billing like the i meter data is just a report but in this case, instead of getting a report, uh, the iMeter data can give you an invoice. So it gives you the invoice that the owner can give it to the tenant for, to pay for the for, for the utility. Uh, they're available. If you want a presentation on that, let us know. The iMeter billing, it, it's literally unique because it saves the property managers a lot of time. It's not expensive. We only charge $3.50 per meter per month. Uh, so it's uh, literally $44, $42 a year. And, uh, and, and once it's customized, it's very, it's very, it's very easy to use. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can ask us for a presentation on the software. Kaylin will be pleased to set it up so that you can see how the software works and, and, and we can include it in our package. It's always, it's always sold separate. Uh, our meters are, of course, measurement cannot approve. They're multifunction meters. Uh, we have, these are the meters that we make. We make the MF3. All our meters are multifunction. That means we provide voltage, voltage per phase, voltage line to line, current per phase. Then we provide power factor, uh, real power, upper end power, reactive power, real energy, upper end energy, reactive energy, uh, frequency, and harmonic distortion in voltage, harmonic distortion in current, and total harmonic distortion per phase and per meter. Uh, some meters can be single phase, some two phase, some three phases. So we add the combination of, of the three to provide the total harmonic distortion. And we can provide all those values from the first to the 12th harmonic. Literally 45 different parameters in one meter. 
There, all those parameters are available through Modbus. The Modbus registers are based on our, are, are published on our website. You can go to the support and downloads in our website. You can see the uh, the the, the Modbus re registers for every every meter that we have. Our meters use 800, uh, 800 milliamp or 80 milliamp uh, secondary side transformers. That makes the, the current transformer is very little and you don't need to add uh, shorting blocks to the CTs. So that's a, a significant advantage uh, cost-wise. The other thing that reduces the cost of our meters is you don't need to have a separate power supply. So the electricians don't have to put a separate circuit to feed the meter. The meter can be fed from the voltage reference and they have a universal power supply. So this meter can be connected at 120, 208, 277, 240, and 347 volts directly to the line without, without major hiccups. And that's a feature available in all our meters. On the multiple customer metering side, uh, the 636 is good for 16 current inputs. And those current inputs can be programmed to be single phase, to be two phase, to be three phase, or to be a combination of single, two, and three phase. Our meters are ready to be installed inside the panel. So if you go to an electrical room where there's no room to add another cabinet, this is a great solution. Our star is the I-45. The I-45 supports 45 inputs. And, and, and those 45 inputs can be assigned. This is even better. The input can be assigned to a specific phase. They can be programmed to be single phase, two phase, or three phase, or any combination of, of, of single, two, and three phase. And it's made to meter a complete 42 pole circuit panel board. It's also ready to be installed inside the panel. That's an option. And uh, we provide rails, we provide CTs. Unlike our MF meter, it's a multifunction. You've got multiple parameters per meter in, in both the 636 and the I 45. All of them are CSA approved and measurement Canada approved. So they're revenue grade meters. Uh, we also sell, sell socket meters. We have every uh, an ANSI form available, although we stock the 1S, the 2S, the 9S, the 16S, and the, the 5S, and the and the 12S. So uh, we typically, whatever you need on, on, on socket meters, we have it available the, through vision. If you have a project and you need more and you you, you need a big number, uh, let us know. We don't, we, we don't hold 100 in stock, but we can get them to you fast enough. These meters can be equipped with a pulse output, with an RS-485, Modbus RS-485, uh, with a Zigbee radio and, uh, and, a, and a data collection unit, a gateway that collects that, or with a CAT M1 modem. And it, they're approved for, literally for the CAT M1 modem and for the radio as well, they're approved under Measurement Canada. So these are also revenue grade meters. And, and the software, they're multifunction, we provide multiple parameters like we do in the uh, in the electrical. This part goes to the mechanical, so that you know, we have water meters, we have different types of water meters, mechanical, uh, ultrasonic, ultrasonic with a short of valve. Uh, we sell uh, Elster uh, diaphragm meters and we can get different types of meters. For the heat, uh, our meters are also ultrasonic, they're highly accurate. The best part is that when we can go into a building, we can integrate everything and provide a standalone system that integrates the mechanical and the electrical into a single reporting platform. You have the iMeter data, which allows you to download reports. That's completely free. You don't have to pay any recurring fees for that. That stands there, it belongs to the owner. Uh, there are options, uh, the iMeter energy analysis, the iMeter billing to generate invoices, to collect the cost of the, uh, of the utilities. And the DCU is the integrator of all that information. That DCU can, can be standalone, can stay in a, in a local server uh, in the building. We, we work with the, with the military and with some uh, schools and colleges that are very strict in terms of their IT security, so it can just stay there. Uh, we can put it in the cloud. It can report to a billing company. So if, the, if there's a billing company doing the billing for the building, they, we can make sure that it connects into that billing system. Uh, a lot of times people have asked us to connect it to the building automation system through BACNIC uh, TCP IP. So we can make that uh, DCU to connect to speak BACNIC so it can tie with the building automation system, or we can talk to both. 
So we have a special uh, data collection units with a dual port, one port to do the backnet and one port to do the billing and to or, or to do the standalone through TCP IP. And that's our strength. Uh, fortunately, we've had multiple experiences in North America, in Las Vegas. We we sub meter airports. We do the uh, I don't think we do we we do any of the airports in Calgary or Edmonton, but we do. Of course, we do Toronto, we do Vancouver, uh, John Lesage in Quebec, uh, Montreal, uh, Halifax, Atlanta. Uh, we we've done multiple buildings, uh, residential, hotels, data centers, laboratories, uh, banking, manufacturing. We provide the the knowledge of how the consumption of energy and, and utilities happen in a building to give our customers the ability to, to, to understand how they're using the energy so they can conserve energy. 